Hi yogis! Today we'll be doing a yoga class specifically for back pain. I myself really understand the struggle. I have four bulging discs in my lumbar spine and my lower back. So I created this lesson for myself whenever my back just isn't feeling at its best. I do this class to strengthen my back muscles and the supporting muscles as well, surrounding my back and release lots of built up tension. I really hope you enjoy the class as well. Let's get started. We're gonna come on our mats and start in a child's pose. Normally I like to start with a seated meditation in a regular seat, but with back pain, I'm sure you know if it happened to you in a seat, a regular seat just isn't that comfortable when you have back pain because it takes a lot of postural muscles to sit with a straight back. So we're gonna start in a child's pose just to kind of ground and regroup with our really calm meditative energy but in a posture that's also really great for our backs. So with your child's pose, you can take any variation. I like to start just with like a regular child's pose with legs together and hands reaching forward. If this is already too much for your shoulders, your shoulders are tight, you can bring the hands back to your heels and hold your ankles or just rest them on the back of your hands. If you're looking to go a little bit deeper into the hips, you can widen the knees and let the chest sink between your legs. That's a couple variations there. If there's any variation that you would like to take, maybe adding a big extra pillow here for extra comfort and restorative benefits, you can also do that or a yoga bolster. So we'll get into our child's poses in any variation you took. Connecting your third eye to the ground or to your pillow. Breathing deeply through the nose. Feeling your breath against your legs or between your legs. Practicing your mindfulness here by really scanning your body in your mind, visualizing each part and asking yourself, what do I feel here? What sensations are arising in this region? Maybe your hips feel tight. Maybe this doesn't feel so comfortable in your ankles. Maybe it feels really comfortable and you want to stay here for the whole class. <laughs> After you do your full body scan, you'll just return back to your breath, to your anchor. Taking into consideration already here that when we work on strengthening our backs to avoid future back pain and to relieve any back pain that we have now, we wanna work very mindfully, very slowly, so always returning back to this meditative energy that we're finding here. If anything ever feels too intense or you have any sharp pain within these movements, um, first of all, come out of the pose or play around with any variations using props like blocks or a chair next to you there's not too much strain in whatever pose that it comes about. And also, if you find this pain to be reoccurring, even out of the practice, go and consult your physician or your physical therapist just to be safe. Yoga can always help to strengthen and relieve any tension in the body, but how, like, beyond that, you wanna make sure that you're safe and taking care of your body um, as well outside of the yoga. Let's take a couple more deep breaths here in our child's pose. Taking in this really grounding, healing, safe energy. Getting a lot of space here in our back from the pose. Letting our postural muscles just take a little breather. Most of the times our back muscles are always being used when we're standing, when we're sitting, to make sure that we're not slouching, even though most of the time we probably are. So in child's pose, we're giving our back just an extra second to really relieve all that tension that's stored within our spinal column. From here, we'll slowly start to come up onto our hands and find a tabletop position. Hands beneath the shoulders, knees beneath the hips. Already here, I want you to really ground between all your hands and all your legs, all of them. 
making sure that you feel really stable here. And once you feel stable, already here activating your core muscles and your lower back so that you're not sinking and already finding this kind of slouchy back bend. You wanna make sure that your core is engaged and you're protecting your back already here in this tabletop. And then we'll go into really gentle cat cows. Obviously at your own pace, at your own depth. If it feels right to you to do a really deep one, you can do that. Or if you're having a little bit of sensitive back pain at the moment, then I would suggest to do really small ones. Really small hip tilts. Not too much going into deep back bends or deep back curls. So really at your own discretion, choose your level of cat-cow. Make sure to connect it deeply to your breath so that you're inhaling when you look up and you're exhaling when you look down. You can feel free to add any variations as well if you want to add any swirls or twirls as long as that feels good to you. If it doesn't, then just stick to the really basic, really slow and gentle cat cow. Do a couple more of these. And then we'll sit on our heels just for a moment to give our wrists a little breather. And notice how when you sit on your heels in the thunderbolt position, which is what we're in right now, that your back finds the perfect alignment without really trying. So this is a really great seat when you need to sit down on the floor, if you wanna do like a quick meditation and your back is sort of hurting you or not in the, its best shape in the day. So I would take this seat rather than sitting on your bum because when you sit on the floor, like we mentioned before, it takes a lot of muscles to keep that long spine. Whereas when we sit in this pose, the spine naturally, without much effort, kind of stays in this natural position of the spine with the perfect curves. From here, you can also Roll out the wrists, since we'll, going, we'll be going back into tabletop right after, so just release any tension in the wrist from that previous tabletop. Any rolling out will do, all the fingers together, or whatever, shaking it out. And then we'll come back to our tabletop, and we'll go into some quadruplex works to work to strengthen our backs and the surrounding muscles, like our shoulders, and our hip joints and our glutes, which usually can sometimes be the cause of pain in our back and we don't even realize just from having the weak surrounding muscles. So first we'll do each limb and then we'll work on the diagonals. Okay, so we're in our tabletop. Make sure you feel really stable, active core already, kind of lifting in the lower back slightly to make sure that you're not in this back bend position. And then you're just gonna lift your right hand forward. When you do this, reach that hand as much as you can forward without curling in the spine. You don't want to like find this kind of really extended reach. You want to make sure that the spine and the back are still in the same spot they were as when you were in your full tabletop. The hand is just reaching forward, really strengthening both shoulders here and the upper back and our core. And then we'll slowly change hands. Ground in the right hand, lift in the left, reaching that hand forward as well. Really active reach, but not too much so that you're bending in the spine. Your neck can stay, your head can stay looking towards the ground. There's no stress in the neck, or you can look forward. Make sure you're not collapsing in that standing arm, that you're pressing against the floor really creating strength here in your right shoulder. And then slowly lower down. Let's lift the right leg now. So again, really grounding in both hands, pressing into your fingertips to make sure your hands are really active. And then you're gonna lift the right leg back. You can do this in a flex or a point, but just make sure that the leg is active and not just like a heavy weight. From here, you also want to make sure that your hips aren't tilting outwards and that they're really aligned, so you're going to close that right hip. 
and then just keep pushing the heel or the toes back without lifting. You don't have to find this really extended over lift. Really keeping the leg in line with the body as if someone's pulling the leg back. Strengthening this right leg, right glute and thigh. Keep pushing against the floor with your standing leg and your standing hands, making sure that you're not collapsing, that your core is still active. And then we'll slowly change legs, ground in the right leg, lift in the left, flex or point. Keep lifting, pressing against the ground, close the left hip, make sure that it's not lifting. Active core here. Let's take one more deep breath. And then slowly bring the leg back down. And now we'll go into diagonals. You're gonna lift in the right hand and the left. Actually, let's change the leg since we just did left leg. So we'll do left hand and right leg. Lifting both at the same time slowly. Again, reaching outwards, not upwards. We're not trying to find that back bend and overextension. Just trying to feel balanced and strong and extended. We wanna feel lots of length here in the diagonal line of our body while still maintaining a really active core. Deep breaths through the nose. Make sure that right hip is still closed. One more breath. And then change sides. Grounding, feeling stable, and then lifting right hand and left leg. Reaching hand forward, reaching leg back, feeling this beautiful length here in the diagonal line of your body. Core engaged, make sure you're not sinking. Pressing against the floor with your standing leg and your standing hand. Keep the hips aligned, don't open that left hip. Nice work, one more deep breath. And then slowly lower down the right hand. And let's take another child pose. Sitting on the heels, again, taking any variation that suits you. We'll take three deep breaths here, giving our hands and legs and back a little breather. I like to rock side to side with my hips on my legs just for some extra release. Let's slowly come back up onto our hands. And just as a transition, we're gonna get up into a down dog, but very crucial here that when we're working with back pain, we wanna keep the legs bent. Keep the legs bent and just focus on the long spine here. A lot of the time people are like, oh, I really want straight legs, but for this purpose, keep them bent. It doesn't matter how bent, if they're really bent or slightly bent, up to you. Just make sure that you're pushing the weight back I'm getting a really nice stretch here in long spines. You can even add a little motion here, rocking forward and back if that feels good to you. Or you can just hold it. If this feels like a lot to you as well, you can widen the stance of your legs. And then just push back, keep bending the knees. Down dog is an amazing pose for the back. Creates so much length here, so much space, so much strength. Let's do a couple more pushes. Make sure your hips are really high so that you can find a lot of length here. One more deep breath. And then we'll bring the left leg in between our hands very slowly. And we'll turn the right foot out, rounding up the hands to find warrior two. Now this takes a lot of core. So that also strengthens our lower back. We're in our warrior two now. Crucial here that your spine stays in the center. You're not leaning forward or turning towards the front. The upper body is in line with the hips. The spine is in line as well. 
only the legs and the hands are working here, as well as the core. This is an amazing pose for back pain because we're strengthening all the surrounding muscles and creating a lot of space here in our chest and in our upper back. You can look beyond your middle finger on the left hand, or you can stay looking forward, keeping the head in line with the spine, up to you. Make sure your fingers are really extending outwards and that you're relaxed in the shoulders. Make sure the left knee is turned outwards so it's not collapsing inwards. Beautiful work. Let's take one more deep breath here. Feel how active your core is. Tuck your tailbone underneath. Make sure your belly's not falling forward and that you're in this kind of like booty tooch position. You wanna really make sure the core is active. One more breath. And then we'll slowly bring our elbow to the left knee to find a side angle variation, a more gentle variation. You can reach the right hand up towards the sky. This will create a lot of length here in the side body, relieving any tension here. Make sure that you're not really collapsing into the arm on your left leg, that you're pushing away and creating lots of space here between the ear and the shoulder as well. Taking a couple deep breaths here. Beautiful work. Up to you now, you can keep the elbow on the knee or slowly drop the hand to the ground, to the inside of your left foot. If this is causing any tension or it's too much, you can grab a block, like I said before, or a book so that it's not so deep, or you can stay with your elbow on the knee. Couple variations, okay? And then we're gonna straighten slowly the left leg to find triangle pose. This is a beautiful pose to create lots of space in the side body, strengthening our back, strengthening our supporting muscles and joints as well. You can look up towards your right hand or stay looking forward, keeping the neck in line with the spine. Let's take one more deep breath here. And then we're gonna bend the left leg, lean the weight into the left leg, Bring the left hand about two hands in front of your left foot. And we'll kick up the right leg to find a half moon pose. Just like we did in quadruplex, the top foot should be either flexed or pointed, but really active. You can look up towards your right hand for an added challenge, or you can look towards the ground for some help with focus. Find your drishti, that one point. Deep breaths here. And then slowly drop the right leg back down to the ground. Use your core. Come back up to a star pose. Beautiful. Back at the center. Let's inhale the hands. We'll come all the way up. Interlock the fingers and invert them. Create lots of spine uh, space here in the spine. Let's take three deep breaths here. Slow down your heart rate. Find that calm, meditative energy. And then slowly let the hands come down. And let's go to the other side. So first we'll turn the right foot out. And then we'll make sure the right knee is on top of the right ankle and that the knee is turning outwards, that it's not collapsing inwards. The back foot is facing out away from the mat. Hips are in the center. They're not turning towards the front. They're turning outwards in line with my body. My upper body is right over my hips. It's not anywhere else. My spine is in perfect alignment in the center. Inhale as you reach the hands up. Exhale as you relax in the shoulders. You can choose again to look over your middle finger on the right hand, or you can stay with the head in the center. Take a couple deep breaths here. Make sure that you have tucked your tailbone slightly so that you're really active in the core. Don't let your belly spill forward. Keep extending in the fingers and relaxing in the shoulders. One more deep breath. 
and then we'll slowly bring our right elbow to our right knee, making sure that we feel okay, that we still feel strong, even though our legs are probably like, oh my God, just know that we're really supporting our back here by strengthening our glutes and our thighs. From here, we're gonna lift the left hand up towards the sky. You can look up towards your hand or stay looking forward. Again, up to you, it feels better to your neck. Making sure that you're really active here in this lifting energy so that you're not collapsing towards the ground. You should feel really nice length here in the side body. Open heart towards the sky. Beautiful. Take one more deep breath here. And then if you choose to, couple variations, dropping the hand to the ground, keeping it on the knee, or bringing a prop like a block to the ground so that you're not so deep. Whatever variation you took, slowly start to straighten the leg. If your elbow is still in the knee, then you won't straighten completely, but very slightly, so that it's not in a full bent position. And then we find ourselves in triangle pose. Looking up towards the left hand or keeping a neutral spine, up to you. Couple deep breaths here. Keep opening your heart up towards the sky. Keep tilting your hips towards the back of the room. Beautiful work. From here, if you're using a prop, you can move it. If you're not, you're slowly gonna lean the weight into your right leg and bring your right hand, like two hands in front of it. And then you're gonna start to lift the left leg. You can keep the left hand on the floor as well if it's too much for you to lift it up. It's another option. Or you're gonna lift the left hand to the sky the top leg is either flexed or pointed, but super active. Keep tilting the hips up so that they become stacked eventually. Deep breaths. One more breath, keep lifting. And then slowly bring your hand to the ground, drop the left leg back to the ground. And inhale, come all the way back up. Beautiful. Let's close the legs. We'll come into a balanced pose. That's really great for the back. It's eagle pose. The reason why is that when we cross our legs, our hips do this rotation to the front and it creates a lot of space in our lower back. At the same time, we're strengthening our legs like we like to do and we're also creating a lot of space in the shoulders from the arm bind as well. So we're gonna bring the weight to our left leg and inhale, bring your hands to heart center and lift the right leg towards you. Already here, finding a drishti, your one-pointed focus. And then when you feel ready, let's do the hands first. I always find doing the hands first is easier than doing the hands after the legs. So you'll bring the right hand forward, 90 degrees like this. And then you'll bind the left on top and connect the palms. Make sure that you're lifting the elbows up away from the chest to get that deep shoulder stretch. And then from here, you'll sit slowly, bending in your standing leg, and then bind the legs to find eagle pose. Deep breaths, keep lifting the elbows up, keep sitting in your eagle and binding the legs even more. Let's take three deep breaths here. Beautiful. On the next inhale, we're going to unbind the leg, then bring the hands to heart center, just like we started. Exhale. Release the pose. Beautiful. How is that? I hope good. <laughs> Let's move to the next side. Moving the weight into the right foot now, you're going to inhale as you lift the left knee to chest. Exhale. Ground in your standing leg. You feel really stable, focused on your drishti. When you feel ready, bring that left hand forward, the right hand on top to bind the hands, bringing the elbows up of the body, and then sitting in your pose as you bind the legs. Really crucial here, because if you don't bend the standing leg, it's gonna be really hard to bind them. Using your breath, keep lifting the elbows, keep sitting and binding the legs, squeezing the legs together. Three deep breaths.
On the next inhale, unbind the legs and the hands. Knee comes to chest, hands to heart center. Exhale, slowly release. Beautiful work. Let's find a little bit of a wider angle in the legs, like this. Inhale, the hands will come up. Exhale, hands to heart center, and let's slowly start to squat down. If you feel any strain, bring your hands to the ground. If you're okay, your hands are at heart center still. And we'll find a yogi squat. Now, yogi squat is a beautiful pose to strengthen your postural muscles. You should feel instantly that when you open your heart forward, when you shoot your heart between your shoulders, that the muscles right here on your spine become really active, which is what we want in this pose. A lot of the time people just kind of rest in this pose and they're like, oh, this is cool, like rounding the spine and it's good for your hips, but you're not doing the pose correctly. So you want to really, from here, use the contra between your elbows and your knees so open your heart between your shoulders to reach your heart to your hands. Round the shoulders back and find beautiful space here in the spine and strength. If this is too much, if you feel any pain here, you can sit on a block so that it's less intense on the legs or you can place them under your heels if your heels aren't on the ground yet. Take any variation you need to. Let's take Two more deep breaths here in our yogi squat. Really active heart opening. Keep pushing the shoulders back. Keep opening. And then we'll sit on the ground for a moment in staff pose. In our staff pose, the legs are straight in front of you and the back is really straight. So if you feel like this is hard or your hamstrings aren't really flexible, so keep the knees bent and create more of this long spine. Wherever you are, really flexed legs, hands are by your hips, and use your hands to help you lift your spine a little bit taller to find more height here. And depending on your arm length, that you'll do different things with your hands. If your arms are short like mine, then you'll come to your fingertips. If your hands are touching the ground, then you'll use your palms. <laughs> if they're extra long, you can bring them a little bit behind you. Lots of options. Let's take a couple deep breaths here, just with this long spine. Active legs, active core. Two more deep breaths. And then we'll cross our legs over and come all the way to our bellies. Whew. Yes. Belly work is amazing for the back because most of the time it really just consists of back muscles. There's some postures that use force, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to use the muscles so that we can strengthen them and in turn protect our back from any back pain in the future. Okay, so first we're going to go into Sphinx, a really gentle, really, really gentle back bend. You're gonna bring your elbow, bring yourself onto your elbows. You can also um, lessen the intensity if you bring the elbows a little bit more forward. So up to you if you want the elbows to be underneath your shoulders or more forward. Make sure the arms are parallel to each other, really parallel. Make sure that the hands aren't curling inwards. The legs are on the ground, belly on the ground. Head can be forward or relaxed, or looking up, whatever you want to do with the head. But use your back muscles here to keep reaching the heart forward, just like we did in our yogi squat right now, before this. Deep breaths, keep pushing the shoulders away from the ears. Make sure you're not collapsing between the shoulders, really pushing against the ground. Again, if it's too much or any pain is coming out, you can always lessen the back bend by bringing the arms more forward. Or if it's way, way too much, then you would kind of lower down completely and just keep a really, really low bend and actively use your heart to reach forward. We'll be here for a couple more breaths. Feel the muscles that are activated here as well when you're breathing. 
Notice how when you exhale that your core contracts and it helps you feel less pain in the back bend. This is really important for a back bend practice to know that when you exhale, you use your core and in turn you're activating these muscles to protect the areas that are being engaged or that we're working on. Let's take one more deep breath here. And then we'll slowly come back down to the ground and we'll bring our hands by our chest. Now we'll go into baby cobra. Two options, well, we'll do both together, but if someone has um, intense back pain right now, then using your hands probably will hurt more because you'll be using your hands to help you. So if you have any chronic back pain right now, I would do this without hands so that you're really just using your back muscles. But if you're okay and you just want to prevent the back pain or if you have really light back pain, then this should be okay. So in Baby Cobra, we're lifting just the chest and the head. The belly is staying on the ground. You're gonna inhale and start to curl your chest up. Look forward, press your legs against the ground to help you keep lifting in the chest while maintaining the belly on the ground. We'll take a couple of deep breaths here. If you find any back pain coming about, and I mean like back pain, not just like, oh, these muscles are being engaged and it's uncomfortable. I mean like real back pain, then you'll remove your hands and come a bit lower. Focus on one point on the ground in front of you or something in front of you. And just focus back on your breath. Come back to your mindfulness practice. Keep pushing the shoulders away from the ears. Keep reaching the heart forward and pressing the legs against the ground. One more deep breath. You should feel your back muscles really engaged here. And then slowly lower down. You can shake out the hips for a moment just to release. And then we'll go in again together without using hands. When you're ready, inhale, start to curl up the body and then remove your hands from the ground floating slightly above it. Deep breaths here. Again, you can choose at whatever level feels good to you. If it's a little bit lower, or if you're feeling really engaged right now, then lift a little bit higher. Keep shooting the heart forward. Keep rolling the shoulders back. Three more deep breaths. And then slowly release back onto the ground and shake out the hips again. From here, we'll go into locust. Just like we did in the quadruplex and the tabletop practice we did at the beginning, we're going to do the same sort of thing here, but with the hands forward and on the belly. You can bring your forehead to the mat, hands are in front of you, legs are behind you. And then we'll do each limb and then work on the diagonals and all of them together. So first we're gonna lift the right hand up. This time you can kind of reach as high as you want and as far forward as you, as you want and can. You can keep the forehead on the ground or slightly above or look forward. Couple options for the head. Keep reaching the arm forward, breathing deeply. Really activating that right shoulder joint, that right upper back. Take one more deep breath here. Keep lifting, keep reaching. And then slowly lower the hand back down. And let's go on the left. Lifting the left hand up, reaching it as far as you can forward. Maybe reaching up higher, whatever feels right to you. Just making sure that you're really actively reaching. Take three more deep breaths here. Keep reaching, keep reaching. Don't get tired. Keep reaching higher and higher. Yes. And then 
and slowly lower the left hand. We'll go to the legs now, lifting up the right leg as high as you can and as far back as you can, but make sure that your leg isn't turning outwards. Kind of turn it inwards as if you want to, as if you want to turn the external hip towards the center, towards the ground. So you're keeping your hips aligned here as well. They're not opening. And then keep lifting the leg and shooting it back. Really engaging in that right glute. Three more deep breaths here. Keep pushing back as if someone's pulling your leg to the back of the room. And then we'll slowly change sides. Going on the left now. Lift the left leg up. Pull it to the back of the room. Make sure you're externally rotating or rotating the thigh towards the center, towards the ground, so that you're keeping the hips aligned and that left glute is in lifting outwards. Lifting the leg up and back. Keep lifting, keep pulling, keep going. Strengthening that left glute. And then let's slowly release. Beautiful. Let's go on the diagonals now. Lifting left hand and right leg. Up and back, keep reaching in opposite directions. Feel the length on the diagonal line of your body, just like we did in the beginning, but now we're on our bellies. Deep breaths. Stay focused. You got this. Feel how active your back muscles are, how we're strengthening them and protecting them for the future. And then slowly lower down. Coming up on the right hand and the left leg. Lift up and reach, 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 reach. Keep reaching. Keep lifting if it feels right to you as well. If it engages too much in the, in the back, you can just work on the pulling and less of the lifting. Everything is at your discretion and what feels good to you. Just making sure that you're still breathing, that you still feel calm. Even though we're pretty active. <sighs> One more deep breath. And then slowly release. Let's take a little hip wiggle between, before we go into the full locus, lifting the hands and legs up together. When you're ready, preparing your arms and your legs for takeoff, and then inhale and lift. Reaching both of the legs back and both of the hands forward. Keep breathing, feel how your core is engaged on the exhale, and how you lift and reach on the inhale. Keep going, let's do two more breaths. Last breath, and slowly release. Shake out the hips. Beautiful work. From here, we'll bring our hands close to our body by our chest, tuck the toes, and we'll lift up and back to come back to a child's pose. Just take a couple breathers here. Releasing any tension in our back. We're doing a lot of strength training. So you might feel some, but just shake it out. Just know that this is how we build muscles and protect our structure properly. This is my go-to lesson 
when my back is feeling out of shape. So I hope that it helps you as well. From here, we're gonna come to a cool down and just work on some stretches on our back. So when you're ready, coming out of the child pose, crossing the legs underneath, and then you'll lay on your back. So proud of you. I hope that you're doing okay. Beautiful work. From here, we'll bring our knees to our chest and just do a couple knee circles with the legs together to give our back a little massage. Deep breaths. The circle can be as big as you want it to be. You can use your hands on your knees or you can let your hands be on the floor. And then change direction. And then we'll do the knees individually. You can again place your hands on the knees or leave them on the ground. Opening the circles wide and then closing them back together. Just releasing any stale energy from the hip joints. We did a lot of glute strengthening today and thigh strengthening. Just release any energy from there. And then change direction. Make sure you're connecting into a deep breath. And then come back to center. Let's drop the feet down to the ground. And we'll come in to thread the needle with the legs. So you'll lift the right leg up and you'll place the ankle on the outside of your, of your left, on the top of your left knee, the top of your left thigh, something like that. <laughs> you can look over if what I said didn't make sense. You're going to flex the right foot already here so that you're protecting the right knee. And you're going to energetically push the right knee forward without any physical force. You don't have to push with your hand. Just with your muscles really pushing the knee away from your body. And you can have a couple options here. You, you will have a couple options here. You can stay here if you're already feeling um, the stretch in your hip flexor and your external hip joint. If you're not feeling it, you can increase the intensity by bringing the left leg closer towards you, maybe bringing the hands behind the left thigh and bringing the leg even closer. But keep in mind that you're still flexing the right foot and you're still energetically pushing the right knee away from you. For more intensity and for added hamstring flexibility, you can straighten the left leg, but you don't have to. <laughs> Lots of options, whatever feels good to you. Just breathing deeply through it, connecting to this really nice stretch here in the right hip joint. Deep breaths. Keep the right foot really flexed. Whenever we go into these kind of positions with our legs, if our foot isn't flexed, the pose will usually go straight into the knee. So when the foot is flexed, we're activating all the supporting muscles around the knee and therefore protecting the knee joint and the ligaments. So it's really important to keep that foot flexed. Take one more deep breath here. And then we'll give our right knee a big hug towards our chest. You can keep the left foot on the ground or straighten the leg, whatever, whatever feels good to you. And you're just gonna hug that right knee towards you. You can circle the ankle around, just releasing from the ankle as well. I didn't get that. Oh. Could you try again? Oh, Siri. I activated Siri somehow. <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> Hi.
hugging the knee, circling the ankle, change direction if you haven't already done so. And then up to you, depending on your back pain, we'll bring the left, the right knee to the left side for a recline twist. If your back is really sensitive right now, I wouldn't go into this deep recline twist, maybe like a half twist, just resting your foot on your left thigh, just to open a little bit that right lower back. But if you are really sensitive right now, then don't go into the full deep twist. If you just have really light back pain, then the twist might be really beneficial to you as it releases lots of tension on the spine. So at your own discretion, choose your level of intensity. We're looking towards the right as well. The twist begins from the top of the spine and the neck. Take one more deep breath. And then slowly come back to center. And we'll go into the other side. Grounding in the right foot with the bent knee. And then we'll bring the left leg on top of the right leg. Flexing the left foot to protect the left knee. Pushing the left knee away from us energetically. And then for more intensity, lifting the right leg coming towards you, maybe wrapping the hands around the thigh, maybe straightening the right leg, depending on your hamstring flexibility or what feels good to you. Breathing deeply. Main focus here is keeping that flex in the left foot and making sure that your shoulders and your neck are relaxed. Pushing the left knee forward with your muscles. Take in the sensations of this stretch in the left glute, hip flexor, and hip joint. Take one more deep breath here. And then we'll slowly hug the left knee towards us. You can keep the right leg bent or straighten it forward. Keep hugging the leg towards you. If you wanna go deeper, you can bring the knee towards your armpit region, towards your shoulder, or just hug it towards your chest. Start circling the ankle. And then change direction. And then at your own discretion, choosing the level for your twist. It can be really gentle, just bringing the foot on top of your right thigh, or slowly going more deeply, bringing the knee all the way to the ground, looking towards the left. Breathing deeply into this twist. Releasing tension from our spinal column. Every breath you take, try to relax a little bit more in the shoulders, like they're melting towards the ground. Let's take one more deep breath here. slowly come back to center and then we'll come into happy baby grabbing the outside rim of your feet by the pinky toe and the arms are on the inside of your legs so it will be like this the reason why the arms are on the inside is so that when we pull the feet downwards we have space for the knees to come closer to the ground 
Soles of the feet are looking up towards the sky. Legs are at almost like a 90 degree angle here. Let's get a nice deep hip stretch. You can feel free to rock right and left to get a little added back massage as well. And a smile on your face, <laughs> if you want, connecting to any happy baby that you can envision in your mind. And the hip release can also really help with any back pain. A lot of the time, like I said in the beginning, if we're weak in any of the surrounding joints and muscles, then it can contribute to back pain. So if your hip muscles or hip joints are feeling really tight, then it can pull on the lower back. Do a couple more rocks here. And then we'll bring the legs back down to the ground. We're coming to our last pose, which will be a low bridge, just to really engage in our core and our glutes. Legs will be hips distance, toes facing forward. Make sure that your toes aren't opening up towards the sides as well as your knees. Even if they look like they're fine now, usually when we lift up, the knees and the toes tend to open up by themselves. So be really aware of that, that your legs stay hip distance. Your hands will be by your hips. You're gonna take a deep breath, and on the exhale, slowly start to lift your hips up. As high as feels comfortable to you, it can stay really low, really above the ground, like really close, or it can go a bit higher. Up to you. We'll take five deep breaths here. Feel that core activation on the exhale. And feel how that supports you and takes less, takes tension off of the lower back. Three more breaths. Two more. I hope your breaths are deep. <laughs> One more. And then slowly lower down back to the ground. And we'll come into our Shavasana. I'd like to give you guys a couple variations. One variation of Shavasana that I like to do when I'm feeling my back is really sensitive or any pain comes up is to open my feet up to the width of my mat and then let my knees fall to the center and then rest on top of each other. This creates a lot of space in the lower back so it instantly you should feel more relief from your back pain. Or if you have a nice big pillow or a yoga bolster, you can place them under your knees and that will also release any pulling on the lower back. A last option is if you're by a wall, is to just rest your legs up on the wall, finding the legs up on the wall position. Your hips can be as close as you want. This is called Viparita Dandasana in Sanskrit and it's said to lengthen your life. So if you do this for a couple minutes every day, then supposedly your life will be longer if you believe so. So I'm gonna do legs up on the wall, I'm already here. Choose your own variation from the ones I described. And then close your eyes. Going back to our mindfulness. Feeling any sensations in the body. Doing a little body scan from your feet to the top of your head. Really channeling how you feel in every region and every part of your body. After you've completed scanning your body, you'll return to focus on your breath, the journey of your breath and the movement of your breath. Feel 
feel the movement of your belly rising and falling with every breath you take. And how that releases stress from the body and makes you feel more relaxed, more at ease, more at peace. Meditation can be a great, a great tool as well to relieve pain of the body. Just visualizing that body part healing itself can really help in the healing journey and make you feel better instantly after a short practice. And the more you do it, the stronger the energy will cultivate within you and help you heal your body. Take a couple more deep breaths here. Filling up the body with new oxygen and releasing completely. Making sure you've released all the air in your body on that exhale. And then you can start to wiggle your hands and your toes and your fingers just to return to your physical body. And then from whatever variation you took to finish off our practice, you'll slowly start to come out. And come to a seated position, keeping the eyes closed to maintain that beautiful energy that we just cultivated in our Shavasana. <sighs> Take a couple deep breaths, feeling the circulation flow from your head to your legs again. Find this beautiful tall spine, strong spine, heart radiating forward, shoulders back. Let's bring hands to heart center. Thank you so much, namaste. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope you enjoyed the lesson and found some ease within your back pain. If you liked it, please leave me any feedback down below, like the video, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. Bye.